I'd first like to introduce myself. I am Brian DeLong, team lead of Team Prop. We are a Prop of Minnesota. Um, we are a paranormal research team that works throughout the entire Midwest. We are based in Minnesota. And I've got a very interesting ghost story that I'd like to share with you. It starts out in Ottawa. Ottawa, Minnesota. It's a small town. It's basically a company town that's based around a silica plant. They mine and harvest silica or glass products, that type of stuff. And it's a company owned town. And so, and that's probably where our story's going to begin. Is when you work with silica, you uh, take a chance on getting something called silicosis, which is basically a lung disease, uh, very similar to lung cancer, and it's a very dangerous thing, and it happens quite often. The story's going to revolve around a gentleman named Bill, um, who worked at this plant and ended up passing away from silicosis along with his brother, who also passed away with silicosis, but he doesn't have any effect with the story. Um, we got contacted a couple months ago by uh, the lady of the household named Bonnie. She contacted us because she was having paranormal activity for a couple of years now. So we came in to do an interview with her and we found out of all the different activities. There was punching in the back, punching in the neck, shaking of the bed, the sensation of somebody in the bed with her, um, apparitions of small girls. There's an abandoned school that's right across the street from her. Um, and there is shadows, odd shadows going back and forth through the rooms. Um, there was also black balls that would shoot up out of the ground now by the lilac bushes. Um, the sensation of a small child jumping up and down by a chair uh, right next to her. Um, hearing giggling in her ear when she's sleeping of a small girl. So after hearing all the different events, we wasn't thinking of along the line of Bill at that moment. But what we was thinking was possibly something malevolent was in there with the pushing and the shoving and the shaking. And that maybe there was something residual from the school. Maybe the little girls just passed through the yard, that type of stuff. You know, on their way home when the school was set in operation back in the 40s and 30s. So we set up an investigation. Um, and that is when I realized we was in a very different type of a haunt because we had bring our K2 meter in when we do, do the interview and this has never happened to us before but we started getting responses on the K2 such as when we're talking about the investigation how we'll do it, what we're going to do um, at the time we left we had five, six different K2 events in that house during that interview. So, so what we did is set it up for two weeks later. We came in and did our investigation. Um, it started out a little slow at first, but then it got a little bit better. And what first started was unbeknownst to me when I'm Upstairs, I'm walking to an EMF suite with the K2 meter. I was going to start getting responses by this chair. I thought that was kind of odd. So I went and got a second investigator. And when I went down to get the second investigator, the client told me, oh, that's Bill's chair. I thought, well, okay, let's try that line. So the second investigator came up, started asking questions. We We've got identical responses again. All of a sudden, the K2 meter is acting up and going off as, as was expected. And so, what my investigator did was ask if 
we wanted to go down to the bedroom, go to his old bedroom and communicate in private. He took me and went off, we got it down there, and started getting responses in the bedroom. This time not with the K2. Um, we set up flashlights out throughout the house, unscrew them. We'd see if we can get any responses from them. There was a flashlight sitting here in the bed, pointed at a dresser. And all of a sudden, the flashlight started going off and started responding to, them, to me. Um, Bill is from a good old boys club. After work, he would hang out with the guys he worked with, have a few beer and stuff type stuff. So he responded really well to me. And then all of a sudden, the flashlight comes on and it's pointing right at the dresser. And him, my other investigator, asked, why well, won't that go on? And I'm looking at the flashlight, I go, it's kind of funny, it's pointing right at that picture. And there's a picture on the dresser and it's pointing away from the bed. So we asked, do you want us to turn the picture? And as soon as we did that, the flashlight went off, he came back on and went off, as if saying yes. So we turned the flashlight, or turn the picture towards the flashlight, and then the flashlight started coming on and off. And we had a pretty good session there. Then we went, let the room rest, took a break, came back up, and we did a second EVP flashlight session in that room. And this time, we used two flashlights. One was pointed over to the closet, and one was pointed up to the picture. They're both on the same bed, a couple of inches apart, but the only flashlight that came on was the flashlight that was pointing at the picture. That picture was a picture of Bill and Bonnie, that's been a woman. It kept coming out over and over again to direct questions. And he was even a bit of a jokester. He would respond to jokes and stuff even. So, uh, we had a pretty good uh, events there. A little later that night, though, uh, Kim and Michelle, another investigator, was over in Kat's room. And in this room, um, people have seen the apparition of, like, a large shadow man. Uh, shadows going back and forth across the wall, that type of stuff. Um, Kat has seen a little girl. And Kat is the granddaughter to Bonnie, who lives with her. So what happened was, one of the investigators sitting up in the corner, watching the wall, the other one's laying down, conducting an EVP session, being very relaxed. Um, and all of a sudden, the one investigator sees a couple of shadows go across the wall, and then the other investigator laying down feels a stomp in the back of her back, as if somebody is in a hurry, urgent trying to get out of there. <clears throat> so, we started thinking there was a malevolent entity within the room that was scaring the little girl that has been seen in the room, and the little girl ran into the door. Because that was the path that she was taken, or the path we believe she was taken. So, we ended up concluding up the investigation, we had a couple other events. Um, Bill used to have a little bar in the basement. Went over, we closed it up, we had some equipment in there. I shut the door, the door was almost shut, and all of a sudden I felt like a paranormal present with me. Then the door shuts on its own. Uh, even in the video you could see me raising my hands up. Like, what's going on? Funny thing is, I didn't hear the door shut. I didn't even know the door shut. I just felt a presentation like there's something not right about that. And the investigators were monitoring us through our infrared cameras, and they set the door shut immediately. They seen it right on the camera. So we ended up uh, taking all of our equipment home, packing up, and going through the footage. We actually had probably a hundred hours of video, uh, 
probably about 120 hours of audio to go over. And what we ended up concluding, I'm going to be sending to you. Um, but we got the flashlight, both the flashlight episodes on. We got the K2 episode on by the chair, which turned out to be Bill's chair. We got Bill contacting us. We got Bill's room door shutting on us. And then the event that happened in Kat's room, we ended up getting an EVP off that. We didn't get a video off it. Couldn't capture the shadows because it was actually, our camera was actually pointing at the K2 meter. We were looking for responses to that. But what we did get was an EVP that clearly states, promise, help, warn, body. And we believe that's Bill, and we believe that's why he's contacting us and staying around, is that he feels that there's something in the house that needs to go away. So we ended up setting up some boundaries in all the rooms, trying to clean it up a little bit. She still has events and not nearly as many scary ones, but we believe that is exactly what happened. He wanted us to help warn Bonnie. What he wanted, and then we believe that's what happened during the uh, interview was, the K2 was going off because he was communicating with Bonnie saying, hey, you need these guys to come in so I can talk to you. And so that's the conclusion of that investigation. We ended up doing a second investigation to confirm. We ended up doing, laying down some more boundaries in the rooms, trying to keep whatever dark entity or malevolent entity might be there, trying to keep it out. Uh, we also had a lot of success there, which you could tell there's a lot less energy in the room because all of our flashlight episodes and K2 episodes were a lot smaller. Um, we're currently going over that information now, and we hope to have that published pretty soon. So, thank you for your consideration, and.